skydivers that were supposed to land in the grass and maybe got caught up on the fence. It's interesting watching these two. They approach it. Oh, trouble. caution, and it's Matthews has backed it into the wall. Tyler Matthews. Well, we're right in that window. If somebody really wants to look at the snow. snow. Hey, now, if, without the plow on the front yeah. of the truck, you're not supposed to do that. We don't say that a lot, that he's in the snow, but. <laughs> oh, we can keep an eye on what happens to Matthews. Definite contact by the 52 of yeah. Grayson. He bounced off the curb, getting in the corner. And, and as Michael said, it's pretty violent when you do that. There's when he's plowing the snow as he's trying to get that going. There's one All thing part of that. NASCAR Goes West, presented by Toyota. Boy, let's jump in the car and take a ride. And if your windshield needs cleaning, you can just do it yourself. A little ride-along program here. <laughs> uh, just really cool, you know, thanks to DC Solar. Uh, you know, they've their name's been run through the mud a little bit uh, the last couple weeks, so nice to get them in victory lane. Through turn 10 and down to 11, Harvick about to catch a pack of cars. Whoa! Somebody! This is after something happened already. Yeah. And Dow was not happy with Clingerman and he took a little shot at him. And then Clingerman says, uh, usually, wow. whoa. usually what that is is somebody like McDowell was on a qualifying run and felt like they got his way and caused yeah. him to not really get a clean lap. But look at this crowd coming at a high rate of speed. Not good. No. Glad that's over and there's only two minutes left in this session. Well, it's Parker Clement. I don't know. I think I'm correct when I say he's never raced here. Now, that didn't, it's no excuse for being where he was, but, uh, you know, a limited amount of road race experience in the on this track, uh, you need to realize other cars are coming at a high rate of speed. He said, I'm going to run till a couple laps to go in the first stage, put my tires on, run till a couple laps to go in the second stage and do the same thing. That's exactly what he's done. Gregson now falls four seconds back. Got to take a break from Canada. Back at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park uh, under caution because of a spin uh, contact from Austin Wayne self. We apologize. We've been having some technical difficulties. have lost uh, power in the television compound a couple of times. That's uh, necessitated us to go to commercial break, but we are back and keeping our fingers crossed here. Hopefully get this thing to the finish with three to go. We said you can't afford a mistake and there's a problem on that right front. You saw the, the rear, they were working on that left rear and then Kyle pulled away. And the tire is off the left rear. That was the audible. Kyle wasn't aware that the crewman had got to the left rear to take his tire off. Oh. And he left. And those that didn't want to see Kyle Busch come down to the truck series and win, they're cheering. Mine are the cars. The car, the car is at 90. So Kurt laughs. Yeah, my water pressure is pretty high, but the cars is at 90. The reason they reason that the gauge may be stuck, and so they think the car is okay. Kurt not too hot, but trying to overcome now after losing many spots on pit road. How about that? The 18 of Kyle Busch trying to warm the tires up just hit the grass. Harvest's going to come up and give him the lane because he knows that it's over, and that's huge right there. Who clapped? <laughs> Kevin Harvick's team will have six minutes on pit road to make repairs, and that's timed from pit entry to pit exit, and try to get him back up there and up to speed if he's going to be able to continue. Larson, Truex, crash. We've had an incident-free race so far. Only one car got up into the wall. That was Ryan Newman under green. There was no caution. They did make an air pressure change, significant change in that right rear because the track definitely changes. Jimmy Johnson spins off turn two. Caution. No caution yet. Yeah, caution's out. Lap 159. Jimmy just... Did you just take over Larry's role from last year? Because I, I said incident-free, and here we are. And well, that was incident-free, didn't you? Sorry, he just Jimmy. spun out. <laughs> now, he's happy now. Just, yeah. learned, just learned he was on TV. All right. High fives all around. Except his guys in the pits with a, uh, with a broken car. 
It's when okay. You're about him it's also. okay. He's on TV. He, it's it's a win-win. I don't think he can trust his pit crew, Steve. I think that you're looking at potential green flag pit stops. Although here we go. Here's Corey the LaJoy got into the wall and slow on the racetrack. That brings the caution out. Here's Jimmy Johnson say that is what you call sliding it into the corner. But, but that's an important battle because they're battling. Newman and Johnson are fighting to be the first car one lap down. If we got, oh, back straightaway car in the fence. Nick Murray. Yes. I tell that you what, right, 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 right front. front. Mike, that one car Keep has been up. up against that wall the whole race. Uh, I don't know hey, what happened there, but he's been riding that wall. I know that. Go by, then you're good. Okay, you're fine. Don't go anywhere. More of this to come, that's for sure. Trucks at Iowa. Roads cut, freezing off, and it lost all their momentum. And here comes the world. How about this? Oh, oh big contact. Nemechek, Crafton, Rhodes, Friesen. Serious contenders for the win. And that changes everything. Wow. Now, don't let me jinx this, but we've not had a caution for contact no, we all day. You just did it, Mike. You just oh, did stop it. it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Mike, what'd you say about caution flags? We haven't had any all day, and all of a sudden, here we are. What? We've had three in the last. Daryl, I said that an hour and a half ago. Well, they, they just, got, they just got down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had three of them here in the last uh, last stage. Who's he? Greg Alding. Seeing Tiger march out there in that red shirt it's kind of like seeing Johnny Sauter in your rearview mirror. Like, oh, here he comes. You saw the battle for the lead heated up to the point where they were side by side trying to come out of turn two and contact with the wall for Ross Chastain, spin for Kevin Harvick, and the caution has come out here at Darlington. We've seen this before, haven't we? Yep. Dale, two cars just cannot fit on the exit of turn two. Then there was a lap car to make it three wide, and you can see the results. Not enough real estate for everyone. And Parker. Steve Ross came on the radio and said he wrecked us. And they all agreed. And pit road is closed with two to go. Now Casey Kane already a lap down. Here comes Boyer. He's looking, looking to the inside. Casey Kane is there, and Blaney had to go to the outside, which he's not had to do in this run to get by Casey Kane. Mike, I'm in the 19 pit box for Daniel Suarez, and we walked by, and the team stopped me and said, look at this, the rear changer. When he made that last change on the last stop, his gun completely snapped in half. He was able to complete that stop. We've heard about some gun issues. This is the first time we've seen one this extreme. I got board shorts, man. I'm not surprised to see Tony Stewart near some beer and some bacon and some food. <laughs> and a pool. <laughs> and a pool. Is he going to get him in? I really oh, want to see, no. yeah, oh. see this happen. Come on, Ruck. Commit. This is the kind of fun that you can have at a racetrack. Make sure to make your way out. This is the how exciting about that, things that take place. Uh -oh. hey. Hey. <laughs> not the radio. Not the radio. <laughs> yeah. That's like when your cell phone goes in a pool. That was worth it. <laughs> I mean, Cole Custer is the fastest car on the racetrack, but at seven seconds back, I just don't think he can make up the time as we see Garrett Smithley correct this double zero, or excuse me, the zero, there'll be no yellow. There's a lot of action right there. I was trying to do some math and the zero spun <laughs> yeah. out. Anything added to zero is still zero, Steve. I'd say this is fortunate. Two zeros. To spin all to pit road in a narrow entrance of pit road and not hit anything, Garrett Smithley pretty lucky right there. About the race car drivers having trouble with this track. How about the pace car driver? So we are going to assume this is Brett Bodine just because it's fun. And to he's normally the pace car driver. <laughs> yeah. His back bumper trying to take away that advantage. Will Power, the Daytona 500 winner this year. Third in points in Joseph Newgarden. Holy smokes.
do you question whether James Heathcliff should feel shame? Oh, we love to go into IndyCar just to examine, to see who's got shame here. Let's find the person who is ashamed. How can we shame them? What do we have here? Do you know the question race car drivers always get from people that aren't into racing? What happens if you have to go to the bathroom and you bragged, I have never done it in the seat or the suit? What's going on today? Well, let me, let me tell you something, Kev. I, I always maintained that I knew at some point in my career what happened. Well, I was sitting there during that first red, and I was begging to get just three minutes. It's all you need. Three minutes, wheel off to wheel on. And when we got going again, I was my legs were shaking. I had to go so bad. I'm like, I can't drive a race car like this. So under caution, it took me a full lap. It was one of, one of the least comfortable experiences of my entire life. But I can officially say I've joined the likes of Will Power and Dario Franchitti and other greats that have peed themselves in their suit. So Tony Gana looks more like a wrestler than a racer. He's got an uneven ears, a big nose, and a thick neck. It's racing. I don't have to be pretty. I just have to be fast. Hi, I'm Mateus Leist. I'm from Brazil. I'm 19. I race for a legend. And my teammate is the best driver I've ever seen. He's my hero. <laughs> Tony Kennard, the legend, both a series champion, Indy 500 winner, and at 43 years of old, showing a good sense of humor about his teenage teammate. Pretty noticeable paint job to have in your mirrors. Yes, it's yeah. like a big bumblebee. <laughs> no mistaking that somebody's right there. So fourth place, fifth place, and sixth place. Dixon, orange and blue nine, Ray Hall, Red, white, and blue, 15, Bourdais. The Bumblebee 18, is that what you called it, Bumblebee? I'm not taking responsibility for that line. <laughs> That's all you. And the race has stopped before it even really got started. The pace car spun and hit the wall, exiting the pit lane off of that hump that comes off onto the racetrack. Uh, you see the safety team is there with the pace car and, uh, and its occupants. They're going to try and motion the field around, although I think most of the drivers have shut the engines off by now. Watch this. Just bizarre. It's like he wasn't expecting to see the two-seater there. And that is one of the fastest sections of the racetrack for the race car at speed. Just accelerating and hit something or... Yeah, I think he just got on the gas, unfortunately, and the back end came around because it gets the back end gets light going over that hump. So, uh, Oriel Serbia is the pace car driver. There you see the passenger and the pace car driver coming out. That No, that is not Oriel. That's Mark Royce of uh, General Motors. So uh, the field is all stopped. Alexander Rossi drove around and continued around to the back of the field, but everybody stopped there as the engine shut off. And um, I have to say, I, I, I can't recall seeing first. this in, uh, in all my years doing this. I've seen the pace car stolen once <laughs> yes. years ago. Only car that hasn't fired is Rene Binder's, the 32 car. You see it's been uh, attached to the toe strap and is being brought back around that way. The uh, backup pace car that was brought out uh, needs a, a transponder affixed to it. That's what's being done now. And you see Rene Bindu's car is being pushed back to the uh, Hunkos Racing Pit, which is the last one at the far end of pit road. His car did not refire on the racetrack when everyone else was started up. So some problems also before the green flag for the 32. Uh, I'm going to check. I just I thought I just heard a, a penalty called out. Was that the 32 car for Rene Binder for working on the car under the red flag? So uh, they'll have a two-lap penalty before the race even starts as they continue to try and figure out why that 32 car wouldn't refire on the racetrack when all the other cars did. J.J. Yaley in the 23 brings out just the fourth caution of the night and in the wall and stopped up against that wall right in turn four. See tons of smoke out of the back of that car. Thanks, Steve. Some sort of an engine problem? And Steve, the 11 car was on pit road. Keep the old rods in place. He was on pit road when that caution came out. They went ahead and serviced the car. That's going to put him a lap down, but 
Well, maybe it's not. I should put him a lap down, but he should be able to stay out and get the free pass and get back in the lead lap. Looked as though J.J. Yaley was waving to the crew, hey, give me a shove, just push me back to pit road. Still got the window net up. Got him chalk up there like an airplane. See that? Yeah, the left rear tire. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going to roll like that. Yeah, man. Driver gets out, doesn't have it gear, I think it take off. Well, if he wants it shoved, then it, it could have blown up. I'm not sure what happened there. But I think he, he just wants a you know, wants to be pushed on into the garage, he'll take care of it, but don't want to get out and go through the whole hassle of getting an ambulance and all that. Well, once he gets out, his day is over, but. I think the old NASCAR official is going to tell him what he's going to do. Yeah. That's a, They're still talking to him. <laughs> he still doesn't want to get out of that car, it looks like. Well, it's that's interesting because to your, to your point, I mean, if it blew up, he'd want to get out, but. But maybe he thinks there's nobody see his helmet coming off well, now. Yeah. Look at the tail, though. There's no, I mean, there's a little bit of dirt there, but not a lot of oil like you'd see if it really blew up. But, man, that was a ton of smoke. Yeah. Again, a little bit of an unconventional broadcast that we're looking forward to next week. At least I'm looking forward to it because those, those three guys right there will take all of the race calls from the booth. I'm actually going to go down to pit road and, and see just how easy those guys have it. <laughs> I think you're going to see how easy we have it. Oh. I think that's what you're going to learn. And I think what I'm going to learn is how easy you make this look. I am <laughs> nervous about, about reading. <laughs> hey, you know, we don't have hockey, do we? Because I can't pronounce the goalie's hey, name. Hey, yeah. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Tour de France, right? Oh. Tour de France. We have to use some <laughs> cyclist names. <laughs> they're, hey, just, they're just as difficult. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say they have to climb a hill. I'm not going to I'm not gonna name the mountain. <laughs> uh, I can't pronounce it. I think you're, you're – uh, Southern Virginia accent would be perfect saying French names. Okay. <laughs> we might find out. Sounds scary to me. And jockeying for positions all over the racetrack now. And look at what time it is. Steve, we saw this yesterday. The sprinklers just automatically come on. What it must be around ten o'clock. Maybe we should look at Denny Hamlin's yeah. If we look at Denny Hamlin's dash, we'll know exactly what time maybe, it is. Maybe that's why he had the time on there. He knew 10 o'clock the sprinklers were coming on. Well, I tell you what, it's got pit road wet. The end of pit road on the outside lane is actually wet. In the stats, it'll look like the same it did last year, but it wasn't easy as it was last year. Car's rolling, Martin. Careful. Oh, no. Watch out. Careful, Martin. Martin. Let it go. And let it go. Just there let it go. It goes. Way to go on that <laughs> Only seven drivers have won this year after 19 races. Some of the fewest numbers of race winners through this point of the season. And you know the 78, he was just in victory lane a year ago. He knows how to get to victory lane, and he's going to have people help, but I'm not so sure about now that, he's going right? to have to back up. Somebody might have led him astray. <laughs> He's lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's over there. Yeah, they're, they're trying to get him into the right spot. That's a great problem to have, Rick. He wants to get there because he knows his team's there, and the best place to celebrate is with the guys that have helped you get to victory lane. He is completely completely changed the way this is supposed to work. <laughs> that was the least of his problems. And when you're standing on the door and your car starts to roll, what do you do, Rick? You abandon ship. <laughs> Just let her go. I think the post race has been more eventful than during the race for Martin Truex. <laughs> yeah. Steam coming out the base of the windshield. <laughs> Maybe he needs to get out and let the car drive itself. <laughs> 